What is up everybody, my name is Andrew and welcome back to Space Engineers Survival on Pertam. This is episode number 57 and it's another episode where we'll be building part of the ship which is down there sitting over there. Um, I did a little bit off camera just like I did before last episode uh, and I'll show you around with what I did. So probably the most obvious thing is these fronts right here. I was thinking about what, what I wanted to do for the front and I workshopped a couple of designs. Um, we have one design here on the left where it's kind of like a, a, a gradual up sort of thing. And I kind of like it. And then we have another design on the right where it's more of a like a, an angled block up and then it kind of comes to a, a front like that. I don't know which one we're going to go with. I'm still kind of feeling them out. You guys gave some good su suggestions as well, including one uh, hammerhead design and then another design inspired by Star Citizen or, or one of the ships in that. Um, so I'm going to keep looking around. I'll keep trying things out and we'll see what uh, what we end up going with. It is a combat phase, which is why I'm checking my, uh, my little signals here. I want to make Sure we don't get attacked but another thing that i've did is i've put up this little bit of structure here on the top it's just a couple of blocks to uh to kind of give the ship a little more definition and give us a little bit more direction for where we're going um these ones right here uh right here actually are all conveyors so i was talking about redundancy i was saying we might have some redundant conveyors on the top so i have done that where we have conveyors coming all along the sides up there and they actually connect right up there into this back room here uh in this back room as well i added these catwalks I don't think I had them last episode. Oh, it's very dark in here if we don't have the light on. But um, but yeah, so now we have the catwalks here and uh, we don't really have the roof in. It's it's like the blocks are there, but it's not quite done. So I just added a couple blocks off camera. Uh, what else did I do? Just a little bit more to this front over here. If I open this door, um, I also added in a couple of assemblers on here because I thought that they'd go pretty nicely right there. So we have an assembler right there and another one right there. And they each have, uh, I think, a yield module and a speed module, um, although those aren't quite built up yet. Uh, and then if we continue on this way, I don't think there's anything new right here. Um, and then the final thing that I did off camera is I tested this out to make sure that it would work. Um, this is where we're gonna do our little projection thing. Uh, I tested it out with a, uh, a little test ship right here, which is just a T for test. Uh, and what, it, what I have essentially is one of the small connectors uh, as well as a merge block. So the merge block will allow us to build these and then the small connector will allow us to connect it so that we can you know, add ammo, add fuel or whatever to our little drones. Um, which brings us to what we're gonna be doing in this episode. We're gonna be working on the second floor of the ship here which uh, which needs a lot of work. Um, it's going to involve building that welding station there, uh, building up some custom turrets to put right here. It's also going to involve building the little drone ships that are going to go on there, and, and as well as building the structure for the second floor. So it's quite a bit that we're going to be doing in this episode, but I think by the end, our, our ship will be looking very nice. Um, hopefully. <laughs> I guess we'll find out. Oh, we have a Reaver coming in. Okay. We have a Reaver Thrasher coming from this direction. Um, now, we have weapons over here. We have weapons over there. I think we'll probably be fine, but I'm going to get in the railgun just in case because I want to make sure I can get those two shots off before um, before bad things happen. So let's hop in here. Uh, I did put an AI defensive on this thing, by the way, so we now have that. That should help us out a little bit. Uh, but let's see. Reaver Thrasher, it's kind of large and it's coming directly for our base. Let's see what happens. Uh, I'm a little scared. Okay, things are engaging already. That's good. I think I'll fire my first shot right. We'll wait for it to go up. There we go. Oh, that was a miss. Okay, let's wait for our second shot. Let's wait for it to kind of stop a little bit. It's going very fast. It's going insanely speedily. And right into something. Right into something. Why? Why did it drive right into my base? Uh, I mean, I, I want to shoot at it because I see it firing, but I, maybe it's not the best idea. Well, let's have, hop out and uh, and go investigate because that just happened. The River Thrasher just decided to thrash something. Where did it destroy? Oh man, it flew directly into one side. Of oh, they really don't like our little our little power thing, do they? It it flew right into that. Um, so I guess this guy's still a threat, which is why that guy's firing. Maybe not anymore. All right, anyway, well, here's here's this. Um, there's probably some weapons in here that might try and get me. I don't know where they are. Although I guess if there were, that guy would probably be firing more and he's not, so I think, I think we're fine. But he just went straight into our base here. Yeah, man, okay. He even got into the, the underground just a little bit. <laughs> well, it's good Honk the Tonk was parked over here. Did we have anything parked right here? I don't think we did. It was pretty much just an area uh, with um, with some some wall 
But the heavy armor kind of withstood pretty well, and he actually missed our battery ship by just a little bit. That's pretty good. All right, well, we're not going to worry about him right yet because I want to get this thing um, done. So we're working on some custom turrets here, and I've only done this. Well, I've, I've technically not done this before, but Kanajashi did it when we did the Escape from Mars series, and he showed me how to do it, which was pretty awesome. So we're going to be doing that technique to make some custom uh, rotor hinge turrets. So essentially what you do is you get a small hinge, and you plop it right in the middle right there. You connect them, and what you end up with is a, a crazy good uh, custom turret. So I think we're going to actually use this guy right here because it's a small grid thing that we could use. Ice Eater 9000. All right, well, let's hop in the Ice Eater 9000 and and, uh, and use it if we can. Oh, hey, <laughs> I accidentally controlled the Pertem Observatory. <laughs> Whoops. Well, <laughs> here's the Pertem Absor Observatory. <laughs> we can actually see our base there because it's loaded in, which is really cool. Actually, if I remember correctly, last time we were looking through this, we couldn't see our base. So that's actually really neat that we can see it now. We see the Dune Power Bank right there. We see the uh, the museum, the the base, and then the fortress right up there. So this is really neat. All right, we are controlling the Ice Eater 9000. It's right under us. I'm actually just standing on it, which is why I have this view, <laughs> which is really weird. But we have our cameras too. We can always plop into, which are more accurate. But I think it's kind of funny that we're just standing on top of it. <laughs> okay, back to the Ice Eater. Okay, so basically what we're going to do with this is we're going to come over here and we're going to stick a little hinge part on it and we're going to plop it right in the middle right there. Okay, so Ice Eater, just stay there for a second. Okay, so that's basically what you do right there. And then I can just sit right here, I can grab it, and we can try and fly a little bit closer. So down, forward, we're going to go to the right a little bit as well. So forward a little bit more, it's like playing a claw game. I think maybe we need it up. It's kind of finicky. Down a little bit. I don't know, that might work. Let's see. We'll go here, grab another angle. Forward. There we go, that should be perfect. Okay, so now when we hop in this, we should be able to go ahead and attach that. There we go. Remove this from him, and perfect. All right, we now have that attached. That is now the hinge part for this hinge, which is crazy because now you can stick a full-on weapon on this thing, which is exactly what we're gonna do. Now I'm gonna replicate that in the other ones as well, so give me some time. I'm gonna go through and do that, basically, to all four of the ones I have. So let's do that, and I'll be right back. And connected, perfect. All right, let's attach this one. Oh, <laughs> I forgot to turn on lock, I guess. Uh, that's not good. No! The Ice Eater! <laughs> oh man, well at least we got it connected. I think that's because I tried to do two that time. Whoops. There we go. Oh, okay. It's fine, we can still fly. We're just missing parts from this side. And what parts would those be? Wait, where, what, what do we have? Oh, we're actually not missing that much. We have pretty much everything else we need to fly. We're just missing a couple thrusters and that's it. We're just fixing up the ice eater here. It took a little bit of damage, but I think it'll be fine ultimately. Um, we don't need this one here. Instead, we need one facing this way. There we go. And with that, the ice eater should be back to normal. Let's get all these things repaired and we'll, uh, we'll be right back. What do you mean build planner is empty? Oh, it is. So it is, so it is. There we go, Ice Eater is back to normal. Okay, welcome back, Ice Eater. We just need to get to that last one and we'll be good. Okay, this should be good. Let's go ahead and attach. Yeah, that, um, that about checks out. All right, let's go ahead and remove that. <laughs> oh man, I play this game. <laughs> I play this game. Okay, uh, let's, let's, um, yeah, yeah, that, that, yeah, I'm sorry, Ice Eater, you were a casualty of <laughs> uh, that, whatever that was. Uh, okay, let's remote into this and back up. This is going to be a little bit finicky, but maybe, just maybe, we can use our gyros to, uh, to get us up here. All right, I don't know if this is going to work, but we're going to give it a try. Let's back up onto our little ramp, angle ourselves up. And hopefully it'll maybe work. Forward, forward, and I think we have it. Okay, we're back up and good. Okay, now this guy unfortunately fell off, but 
I mean, we didn't lose that much on this thing. And considering it fell from that height, we actually didn't lose that much on this guy. Okay, I think we put the uh, the poor Ice Eater through its paces today, and we can finally let it return to home um, <laughs> alive. I don't know how it didn't get destroyed, but somehow it has survived. All right, Ice Eater, welcome back. You have passed your trial. Go ahead and connect that right there, and there we go. Welcome home, everybody. In fact, we're just in the right spot to get some of this stuff. Let's go ahead and do a quick refill. All right, all that has accomplished um, is pretty much allowing us to get this stuff set up. Now, the way we're going to do this is we're going to make some weapons out of this stuff. Uh, and I'm going to need some tools, some interior plates and some steel plates for this. So let's grab some of those and we're going to set these up. Now, uh, how do we want to set these up? I don't quite know. I think we're probably going to set up one that shoots fast and one that hits hard because I don't think you can do both. Uh, well... You can try, but I think one that shoots fast and one that hits hard is going to be good. So we're going to do this one right here is going to be the one that shoots pretty quickly. And I think we're going to go uh, from there, maybe. Let's grab our weapon of choice, which is going to be block weapons. Um, probably the auto cannon, because that shoots very quickly. The other option, we can use auto cannon or we can use warfare gatling gun. I think I want to try the auto cannon, though. So let's go auto cannon for our first weapon. And it's basically just going to be like one two, uh, three, and four. We're gonna have four guns on this, which is why it's gonna be quite a bit of a beast. Um, capable of shooting four weapons. I think the auto cannon turret has two, so this will be pretty much double the firepower of the auto cannon turret. Let's actually move these out one. Actually, that kind of looks kind of cool. You've got a couple of them kind of offset. I actually like that look. Maybe we do it like that. That, that looks kind of cool. <laughs> For our second gun, I think we're going to go for a four Gatling in the same configuration as this one right here. Um, and so I think we're going to have our fast shooters kind of on the sides right here. And then we'll have some like heavier weapons up here uh, and maybe closer to the front right here. So more like assault cannon stuff here. But on the sides, if anything's trying to flank us, we'll have these fast shooting ones um, ready to go. Now we can, of course, throw some heavy armor right here because that is going to eventually go there. There we go. And that's going to be the profile of these ships. All right, there we go. Two custom turrets fully set up, not with ammo, but fully set up nonetheless. Um, actually, what they're what they're missing is um, the custom turret controllers, which I guess we should add right here because we have a lot of space. Um, so we could add normal block right there and then maybe our custom turret controllers. Uh, well, we could add them in here, actually. That That's not a bad spot. We'll throw them right there. We'll have one, two, and we'll have number three because I don't know what to do with this space. I, I have the hallway that's going to go over there, but we have a lot of empty space right there. And speaking of empty space, there was something I wanted to add, and that is a jump drive. Um, it's something that we should probably have if we're going to, um, you know, if, we're, if you're making a ship, a jump drive is always a good idea to have. It's very expensive, though. That's the thing. But we can afford it. Uh, I'm going to stick it like this. I'll turn it around like that. We'll put one jump drive. We'll put two jump drives just like that, right smack dab in the middle of the ship. And that actually comes up perfectly uh, to the ceiling right there. So that's, I think that's a perfect addition. Um, and yeah, we'll probably put like a, a hallway right about here. So you'll come up these stairs on the side. This right here is gonna be our little um, projection area. So that'll be kind of outside. We'll have a little airlock going out there. Uh, you'll have your hallway, which is gonna go that way. Um, and then it'll come up over here somewhere. Uh, now, as for the bridge, we'll probably we'll either throw the bridge on the front right here or on the top. I don't, I haven't decided yet. So, uh, yeah, but I think two jump drives right there is a good idea. And if we decide that it's too many, we'll we'll cut out one. These each require a thousand superconductors, which is a lot, but and gravity components. But I think we can handle it. Okay, let's get our custom turret controllers built up right here. These are gonna come in handy, and I have them. Um, positioned in such a way where it's actually easy to find out which one is which. Is my light off? Yeah. So the right one right here is going to correspond to the right weapon, which is the autocannon one. And the left one here is going to correspond to the left weapon, which is the Gatling one. And we're going to mirror that on this side. I might not do it in the episode, uh, but then I'll do it off camera if we don't do it in the episode. We'll shift click to make those um, detector components that we're missing. I think that's all we're missing for these guys. So um, we'll get these two set up really quickly. And hopefully once we do that, they can actually help us if a Reaver decides to attack us. They'll they'll come in and fight. 
There we go, here's one, and here's number two. We probably should get these blocks built up as well while we're here, since these are gonna block us from uh, being able to access our weapons there. Or maybe they won't, I don't, I don't actually know. I don't remember off the top of my head how this structure works, but we should get them up anyway. Okay, I've got both weapons set up. I uh, don't know if I can control them, let's see. Uh, if I go over here and hit control, Oh yeah, okay. It's it's um it's kind of okay, up and down need to be reversed, but it's almost there. Ah, yes, perfect. Okay. Now we have a weapon right here that is custom and can hopefully fire. Nope, cannot fire. Not yet. All right, I've loaded it up and let's give it a, a test fire. Oh yeah, there we go. That's working. Okay, and then the gap probably works as well. Let's hop down here into control and test it out. Oh, this one needs to be changed. Hang on. And there we go. Oh, man. <laughs> All right. I, I, I pity the fool who tries to attack us now, whichever reaver it is. We'll see what happens. Um, okay. We've got two custom turrets set up. The other two, I'm not going to set out. Oh, that hurt. I'm not going to set up right now. I'll set these ones up off camera um, because it's going to take some time and I'd rather focus on the other ship stuff. This is something I, you know, this is tedious stuff I can do uh, since we're going to just copy the same custom turret um, later. Okay, anyways, uh, what do we want to do now? I think the next thing we need to work on is getting some of this stuff welded over here. Now, a lot of this stuff I cannot weld um, with ship because it's already under other stuff. So let me just grab a couple of these uh, right here and hop over here. I want to see how many trips this is going to take us if I try to weld all this stuff. But there's one right there, an oxygen tank. And speaking of oxygen tanks, by the way, I've been thinking about if I want to pressurize this ship. I wasn't sure at first. Uh, what are you? You're just embers. Okay. I wasn't sure at first because... Pressurizing the ship would require a lot. First of all, this room right here would be a nightmare to pressurize considering it's pretty big. Um, we could pressurize it. The only problem would be we'd have to depressurize every time we open this door, which might be fine. I don't know. Um, as far as these go, these rooms should already be pressurized. Uh, I don't see any um, opening here except maybe this. And then the same thing on this side right here. We have one of these that might be... A, uh, a cause for concern. But other than that, this entire hallway would be pressurizable, and this room as well would be if we were to block up uh, these right here, which I don't have any steel plates, but if we were to block up these little holes here, this entire room would be also pressurizable. So um, maybe we will focus on pressurizing. I don't know. It would be cool. It's always cooler to have a pressurized ship, um, although it's a little bit more of a pain in the butt. All right, there we go. Pretty much all this stuff is now welded up. Um, yeah, all these blocks. Uh, so if we look at it from above, most of them should be welded. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so we can cover most of these now if I had some steel plates. Uh, we can cover most of them with what we want to do. So the way I think we're going to do this is this is going to turn inward right here. And then it's going to go... That's going to be right there. There we go. Maybe something like this. So we come around this way, you come around here, up like that. But that doesn't leave us very much room for this, does it? Having that, we pretty much have to have that directly against there. Which is fine, I mean... The ship's not gonna be that large. Ooh, now that's not a bad idea. If you have an offset door like this, this leads you to outside. So now you're out here, and you're forced to go through this sort of double airlock situation. Because what, what we do is we'd use uh, like a, a passage, I think they're called. A passage. So we'd use a passage, a uh, three-way one. So a cr no, not a cross, a uh, corner, like that. So you're basically, once you come in here, you're forced to come out this way, and you've got to go through these double airlock doors. So then you're outside with this stuff. Oh, I think that would actually work pretty well. And then right here, this would be still inside. Here's what I, what I, the, the thing I don't like about this so far is that in order to get to the, uh, to the, the front of the ship, you essentially have to go up here, then you have to turn, then you have to turn. Then you have to turn, then you have to turn, which is kind of annoying. What I would rather, maybe we remove this. We, you know, only one jump drive. We can maybe find another spot for another jump drive if we really want one, which I don't think we will be able to actually find a spot for another one. They're pretty large. Um, I mean, we could definitely stick one in here. We could probably stick two in here, like one right there and one right there if we really wanted to. Um, and maybe we will do if, uh, if we want more. But for now, I think we keep the one jump drive on the front. Uh, and then instead of having these, we'll let you walk through here. Boom, 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 boom,
I'm all out of love. I'm so lost without you. Okay, I'm trying to think of how I want to do this um, this section right here for where the printer is going to be. I've got the the entrance right here. I, I really like this this sort of sideways thing that comes out around the back right here, uh, and I've kind of cut off a little bit of the room, which. Um, I think it's an interesting idea. What I'm gonna do is I'm probably gonna end up having the ship sort of have these things on the back of it and then most of the ship's gonna be up front like that. Uh, and then that's pretty much it. They're not gonna be that big, which means we should be fine, but this is gonna be a printer. So we're probably gonna have all the printing things on this side, maybe some on the back right here, one on the back and one on the side here. Um, sort of like this. Uh, here, let, me, let me set something up real quick and I'll give you a quick little idea of what it's going to look like. Okay, so I'm trying to figure out how to set up this uh, this welding device, and I think maybe the easiest way of doing it is something like this. Um, if this works, I don't know if it will, but if it's able to weld the entire ship, then that would be perfect, because messing with rotors, or not rotors, but pistons, would be kind of annoying. Uh, usually the way you do this is you'd have these start right here, and then they, you know, you turn on weld, and then you'd have the piston move them back as they go, but we don't really have that much space. I mean, I guess we well, well, we could maybe set up something like that. Um, if we did it right here, we could have them start there and bzz, move back. The problem is that the piston takes up a lot of space. We pretty much need like this much space here with a piston and then with um, the, the welding piece on the end of it, which is going to end up being a very large device. It, it already comes all the way up here. But maybe that's what we do because like we do have the space, I guess. So basically that would start all the way up here. And I think that should be able to weld everything in this area. And then it would basically go bzzz, move backwards like that. And then hopefully it would be able to weld everything. I think, you know, maybe, we, maybe what we need to do is we need to make the ship before we continue so that we know what we're working with. All right, you know what? Let's get to shipbuilding. I've put on the, uh, the work light above me and we're gonna start building this ship. Let's remove these for now. We'll uh, re-add them later if we need them. And we're going to start building a ship from here. I'm going to turn off the projector. Uh, turn you off. There we go. And we're going to start with a small grid merge block. Because this is how we're going to make our ship. Starting with small grid merge right there. That's how we're going to connect the grids. And then we're going to go with a uh, connector of the small variety. That's how we're going to transfer uh, ammo and stuff onto the ship. So that's the start of the ship right there. And that stuff is temporary. So this is going to continue. Well, I guess we'll use less materials since these things are pretty much disposable. We'll bring it um, this way. The problem is what works on the ground does not necessarily work in space. So, ooh, I, uh, how are we going to do this? Okay, here's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to make an atmospheric um, drone right now uh, so that we can use on this planet whenever we need it. It's just going to use atmospheric thrusters. It's going to be really simple and that sort of thing. Um, and then when we go to space, if we decide we need a space one, we'll make one with ion thrusters because I don't want to mess with hydrogen uh, with a small grid ship that we're going to be building over and over. It just doesn't really make much sense. Okay, I've built a really basic uh, ship. <laughs> None of it's welded up, so we're going to test out our little welder right here. But um, it essentially has two autocannons on the front. It's got a camera. It's got a bunch of these newer um, small grid tiny thrusters everywhere. And um... oh, shoot, it doesn't have power, does it? <laughs> oh, it does. It has a bunch of small batteries, actually. So the small batteries are the power, which means it won't last long. But uh, that's fine. They're mostly, you know, disposable. It's also got a sorter somewhere up here that should... Um, bring in ammo for it. All right, just for testing purposes, I'm going to connect it up right here. We'll probably change this connection later, but um, yeah, I want to test this out. Let's bring this forward a little bit. We're going to change its velocity to go up. We're going to bring it as far forward as we can without, you know, destroying stuff. And I want to see if it can just like in one fell swoop weld the entire thing. I don't know if it'll be able to, but we'll see. That's Okay, that's as far as it can go. Maybe right there. All right, let's see if I turn this on, if it'll weld the entire ship. I don't know if it has a range quite that large, but we'll see. If it does, that'll be magical. <laughs> we'll basically see how far the range is. Oh my gosh, it's actually able to weld the entire ship. That is incredible. Okay, some of this is out of detector components, but that's fine. Oh, it can't weld this stuff, so we'll need some other solution for this. Um, we could perhaps move this stuff one block forward where it can weld it. Or we could what, could, what else could we do? We could throw a little welder back here that would weld those bits. Um, but it's welded most of it. This is pretty good. Now, I want to see if this thing flies. I have no clue if it does. 
Um, so we'll have an automatic system to turn that off and then move this back. Uh, velocity will go down. Perfect. Maybe to about there. All right, and there's our little ship, and it's got the, all the AI stuff in there, and it's got pretty much everything. We have a timer block somewhere in here. Uh, I think right there, yeah, a timer block. P pretty much when we press a button, that timer block is going to turn on the AI, or it's going to disconnect, then turn on the AI, and the thing will fly forward. Or maybe it'll disconnect, then fly forward with a with a with um, uh, an override, and then, you know, <laughs> turn on the other stuff. Uh, I really don't know if this thing will be able to fly on Pertam. Let's fold this stuff up manually. That would grab ammo. We don't necessarily need that right now. But let's throw on a temporary antenna. All right, we've got all the detector components. We've got everything in here built up. So let's go ahead and turn you off. You should now be uh, controllable via the remote control block that we built up just to test this. So let's press K, hop into here, remote access. Okay, let's test this thing out. Uh, we have a gyro on here, perfect. We can go up, we can go forward. Oh man, okay. We can actually move around and stuff. We have eight minutes, six minutes of power. So it'd be good if we had another, a couple more small batteries. So that is something we should uh, maybe add. But other than that, this thing is pretty good. It's got weapons that it'll be able to fire and everything. Okay, let's go ahead and bring this back over here and uh, sit it. Well, I guess we can float it here. It'll stay here for 10 minutes so I can think about what I want to add to it. Down here is where we have our little thruster. It's kind of a, a neat little placement, I think, with the new, uh, the new blocks. Um, now, as far as small batteries go, maybe what we want to do is want to place uh, one uh, here. So some small batteries right there. The only problem with that is that may that means that uh, it's a little heavier, but I'm fine with that. Now it can actually handle moving around at full speed. Okay, and we have a lot more power as well, a lot more time in the air. Okay, so these things don't have very much time to uh, to fly. Uh, which is fine. They're pretty much battle things. They'll go and fight. Now, what I really want to do, I don't know how to do this, so this will be an off-camera thing, or maybe if you guys have any suggestions, post down in the comments, but I would really like this thing to be able to fight, and then if it survives for long enough, it would, uh, it would return to base, which would be this ship, and it would look for a grinder pit. It would basically park next to a grinder pit, turn off all of its stuff, and fall into the grinder pit where it'll be recycled, and then, you know, you can create a new one with, uh, with more power and stuff. Um, I don't know how to do that, but I think that'd be really cool if we uh, had a way to do that. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this into the safety of our hangar down here. I'm going to blueprint it, and uh, and we're going to put it in our, in our little welding thing. So I brought it all the way down here because I don't want it to be damaged by anything else. We're going to throw it right over here. All right, there it is. And you know what? Maybe I'll maybe I'll keep the um, remote control and the antenna on there for now as our as our first version of this ship, so that we can easily build it and drive it away, uh, and test it out and stuff. But yeah, post down in the comments what you think we should add to this. We're gonna configure all these uh, AI stuff eventually so that it can you know do its stuff. But for now, we're not we don't have anything configured. I'm just gonna go ahead and blueprint this. This is gonna be our um, our prototype. Okay, so just to test that out, we've got our prototype. I'm going to go in here and replace the blueprint that's on here. That, that's the control panel. I want to go to my projector and replace the blueprint on here with the Pertam Auto Fighter prototype. There we go. We're going to have to put it in position, so I'm going to go over here, use our build vision to do that. Right there. Perfect. All right, so now we have a ship that's basically on the thing. Let's move this forward just a little bit so that it's at its max uh, forwardness. Okay, that's kind of in it a little bit, but let's let's go ahead and turn this on and see if it gets everything. So just let it sit there. It should weld up everything. It's going to be a little slow because it's got to go block by block. It can only weld what's weldable. <laughs> so we let it do this. And it should give us a ship in, uh, I don't know, like a minute? Something like that. But there we go. We now have our, um, our prototype welder. Is it going to be able to weld these guys? I guess it might eventually. We'll see. There we go, it was able to weld everything. Awesome, I like it. <laughs> okay, what I wanna do for this is I wanna go, I wanna change up how we have this set up because I think we don't need a secondary thing. I think all we need to do is put our connector one block forward, right here. Uh, yep, connector right there. And then we need to put our merge block one block even forwarder. And then once we have those set up, all we need to do is move this offset one like that, and that will connect up perfectly like it was before. So now what I can do is I can turn you on 
and you'll start welding those. And once you weld those, you'll start welding these. So that's perfect right there. Let's grow it, get in this thing and uh, let's move him out of the way. That's, I guess, our second prototype. And we're going to have our third prototype here in just a moment. We're going to have too many of these things flying around. Now this one's still welding up. It should be almost done. And it looks like this one's actually welding everything up. So what I would do with this, we, what we would need is we'd basically need this on a timer and then the timer would need to go ahead and access this to switch lock and then it would be ready. So this would automatically load things with the help of our sorter in there that would pull ammo. Okay, I think I think this is perfect then. Um, I think this, I think pretty much, so we don't have to have the drone configured quite yet, but I wanted to get the room at least set up. So I think I like what we have currently with this setup right here, this little uh, kind of arm thing. I could probably even stick this on that block and be fine, but I'd rather have it on a piston and have this be a little bit more robust. So I think we're gonna keep it like it is currently. Now we're going to repeat that over here. So we're going to have the same exact setup over here and we're probably going to create a second drone that's going to take off from this side. It's going to be a little bit different. It's probably going to use a different ammo type. Maybe it'll be um, a different drone. So um, uh, yeah. All right, we've got this other room set up as well and I have the uh, the top area set up for, for these. They're mirrored of each other pretty much, which I like. Um, but yeah. Oh, <laughs> I was like, why don't they look the same? This one's extended, that one's not. But anyways, yeah, we've got a good thing going right here. I need to figure out how I want to do this this area right here. Do I like it being inset like that? I, I don't think I mind it. What's the center block? Center block's right between these guys. So, but then I don't know about that right there because that is kind of weird. This is probably going to come up like this. It's going to look like that, which looks a little strange. Okay, with this, I think I'm going to go through and do a little bit of welding and uh, and I'll come back once I've got a little bit done. Maybe I'll try and think up what I want to do with this little bit as well. So give me a second. I'll be right back. All right, everybody. Welcome back. I've done a little bit of work here and I've been trying to get the front on uh, making it look a little bit better. And I think I have something that looks pretty good here. It's not welded up, so it's a little hard to see, but uh, it's got this kind of angled design here. It's got a little area for an antenna and then it kind of just goes up like that. And then in the middle will be some little forward facing thrusters, which I think looks pretty cool. Um, I've also built some of the siding over here or the, the, the top right here. So this would be the top to our little factory, our little, uh, not factory, but like a uh, uh, welding um, printer. So we now have like a little area for it and everything and it looks kind of cool. Uh, all the walls are in. Oh, I can't really get it. Oh, I can get over that. Okay, nice. Uh, all the walls are in. The doors are built up so we can now see kind of what it's going to. And what else? I think that might be it. Oh, I also uh, worked on the floor right here and made like a little walkway down to this, uh, this little cargo thing right there. So I had a little bit of a build session and that is what we came out with. Um, we're going to build the, the cockpit right here, the bridge, uh, right in this area. I don't know if we're going to build it to the left or to the right or maybe both. It might be a very large bridge, but um, but but one of them is going to be the bridge uh, at about this level. So pretty much right where we're standing. But I need to get these blocks welded first before we do anything else. So uh, I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to make sure we have all the blocks in a good position and we're going to come in here and weld them all. Uh, I kind of tapered in the fr uh, the side right here. I don't know exactly how I'm going to do this, but I might do something like uh, bring it in like this. It might come around like that. And then this would be like the bridge or something. I don't know. We'll, we'll figure it out and then bring it back home like so. All right, everybody, what do you think? This is our hole so far. We still have a bunch of blocks to weld up here, but that's what we've got so far on the uh, on the bottom. Actually, I think I'm pretty okay with this. Well, I'm not sure about the side design. I need to figure that out. So, but, but other than that, I think I'm good with this front thing. All right, that's kind of precariously placed, but I'm okay. Am I okay with it? Maybe not, hang on. Let's, we have a, uh, we have a little mag plate. Might as well lock it there. There we go, much better. Okay, uh, this is what we look like so far. It's looking pretty good. Um, what I wanted to do as well, now that we have some of these other blocks built up, I wanted to place some normal blocks in here because this is where our bridge is gonna be. Uh, so yeah, and I don't know what else we're gonna have up here. Um, and this might not be, I don't know, we might have two bridges. So we might have a bridge down here, which is kind of on like mid deck level. And we might have one up top as well, like a secondary bridge, just in case the first one gets hit. Cause the first one is kind of where all the firepower will be focused, right? If you're facing the uh, the target, you would presume everything would hit there. Um, I could throw a rail gun in right here, couldn't I? I can't, well, I could throw two rail guns in, but then where would I put my antenna? If we put 
a giant rail gun, more like rail fun, right here. It would look like that. <laughs> uh, no, we'd have to put it back a couple blocks. But, I mean, that would be pretty nice. We'd be able to shoot things. You know what? I've convinced myself. I think we'll do it. Uh, we should probably weld these blocks. So, if I put a railgun, it would make sense to go right there. It kind of sticks out a little bit, which is nice. I like that. And also, we have a connection right here, which fits perfectly in line with these things right here. So, maybe we do that, because that sounds fun. Let's turn these so that it's facing the proper way. Make sure we have the thing sticking out. I could even move it back one, but I will not. I'll put it right there. So we have the um, the connection point right here. I actually like that. Okay, so rail guns will go right there. That'll be our, uh, you know, our main fire or whatever. And then we need to find a place for antennas. I could put an antenna on the front like this. I don't know if that looks good or not, but there's only one way to find out, and that is to try it. Double antennas? Nah, not bad. Bad? I don't know. I can't tell. But for now, we're going double antennas because you know what? <laughs> We have two primary forms of attack. You can either get hit by the railgun or you can be javelined by our antennas sticking out the front. So you better not try and get in front of this thing or, or you're gonna get, we're gonna go medieval on you. Uh, okay, so this here, we need to figure out a way to curve this into that because otherwise it's not gonna look good. And I don't know how to do this because this involves using blocks that are hard to use. How does one do that? Okay, so the, the general block is kind of going down like this. This is like the, the general shape of, of things. That's kind of what it wants to do to uh, stay in line with the other blocks. So with that said, how do I kind of turn this into a side scrolling thing? I could just do this first. This could be the first block actually. I like that. So we start with one of those. Okay, so yeah. We start like that, which looks good because it finishes off this kind of indent little area, which I, th I think looks good. I like it. Can I... Is there a block that combines these two? I bet there is. If I go to number seven, which is our transition blocks, I bet you that they at some point added a block that fits this gap. <gasps> yes, they have one. Sloped corner heavy block. Thank you for coming to my rescue. Dun, dun, dun. Ah, my fuel's low! <laughs> oh man. That's nothing that a quick little trip to the uh, fuelery can't fix. And we go to sleep so it becomes daytime. Good night, everybody. See you in the morning. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back. It is, uh, it is now the morning. Let's close our doors there. And uh, sunrise on Pertam. Okay, we're still working on the front. I'm trying to get this looking good. And... It's coming along, I think. This is looking pretty decent, this side right here. Okay, there we go. I think that's the side right there. So that's going to be what the, the front of the ship is going to end up looking like, which uh, I think looks pretty good. Now we're going to do it on the right side as well. We'll use this side as a model, and we will um, we will make it happen. All right, I've used the last of the steel plates, and this is what we've got. So the entire front is kind of... Uh, I, I kind of like this, what we have so far. Um, I think it looks pretty good. Let, let me get a better angle view of this ship here. Yeah, I kind of like it. All right. Although you'll notice it does keep getting a little bit longer. Every every episode, it gets a tiny bit longer. But I think now that we have the front capped off and we have the back capped off, it's not allowed to get any more longer or any longer. Unless maybe on the top half we go boop <laughs> and make it giant. But no, I think it's good. I like what we've got going on so far. Let's bring this guy back to the base so it can recharge. And then we'll think about what we want to do next. Okay, so we now have a platform on which to build our bridge. Um, I think what we're going to do is we're going to just enclose all this in steel plates. That's the easy way to do it. We're just going to put steel plates all along right here so that we have a floor. Uh, and what we're going to do with that floor, I do not know. I don't know why I'm saying floor weird. But yeah, we're going to enclose all this in steel plates. Although, I mean, we could use this space for something. By the way, now that we've built this we, this entire area, we do have space. What did I put here? Oh, this is the real gun. We do have some space in the front right here to do stuff with. And this is a he very heavy, heavily armored area. Um, maybe I'll make like a little control center or something. Um, actually, oh, some stairs up top would go pretty hard right here. Because look how armored this is. Like nothing's going to shoot through here. This is heavy armor, heavy armor, heavy armor, light armor, light armor. So nothing's really going to shoot through there. We could throw some stairs going up 
right here, maybe. The problem comes when I try to pressurize things. Because I don't think this block right here is pressurizable. I don't think I can pressurize past it is what I'm trying to say. Because there's little gaps in this. So I don't know that this... And the problem with that is that I can't pressurize that block altogether because... Oh, I've made it very difficult to get down here. Because uh, that block is right next to this block. So it's really hard to pressurize that, you know what I'm saying? Unless I pressurize underneath the, the hydrogen, but that would be very odd. But pretty much any way I slice it, if I have this right here, I can't pressurize this area. That's why pressurizing ships is hard, because some of these blocks are not pressurizable. It makes it uh, a little bit difficult. I guess what I could do is I could block this off. I'll put my stairs right here. How about that? I don't have any um, construction components on me to my knowledge, though, so I won't be able to build them. Uh, so I'll have to go into one of our many cargos. <laughs> there we go. Um, construction, please. I'm not going to build ladders. I'm not a fan of ladders. They take a long time to get up. And if you're in an emergency and you need to get up a ladder, then you're kind of in a bit of a pickle. Um, okay, so we'll go stairs. Stairs don't fit right there, do they? Hmm. Okay, maybe I'll do some light armor blocks right there. Let's say you want to get outside. If you want to get outside, then we should probably do it like this. We'll have a stairs going up this way and a stairs going up this way from here. So if you're down here, anywhere in the ship, basically, you can get up wherever you want to. So if you're up here and you want to go outside the fastest, you can go this way, this way, and then, you know, you'd, you'd go to this, which would be our exterior exit. Um, by the way, I did add this, the, while I was doing the off-camera stuff, I did add this second door uh, set right here, so it kind of corresponds to this one. So you come out this way, you can actually get back inside on the other side if you'd like to. Um, so we'll have normal blocks, probably like so, and you can come down like that. Uh, we'll also have blocks coming in this way. So this is going to meet up with that. It's also going to meet up with this. And it's going to meet up with that. So you're going to have like multiple ways to go, which is good. Redundancy is good. I don't know why, but I'm putting random cargo containers everywhere because I'm tired of not having anywhere to grab cargo. So that's the uh, that's the solution. Random cargo containers. But even though it looks like it's going to be in the middle of nowhere, that's this is going to be a hallway. So you're not really going to be able to even see that very well. I'll show you what I mean when I say hallway. I'm sure you know what I mean because I've built hallways before, but uh, I'll I'll add it. Le passage, a French word for passage. Let's build a light one right there. Boom. We'll add a light one right there. Boom. Okay, perfect. So now you'll be able to walk over this way. You'll see the cargo container, but you won't see much else. And it will be pressurizable, sort of. Like, even though this isn't pressurizable, if we have everything enclosed in these, it will be, technically. Although, maybe right here kind of breaks it. I don't know. We'll have to see. I'm the king of the world! <laughs> oh, by the way, I added some batteries up here, uh, which are kind of underneath that little catwalk, which I kind of think are good position. They're unexpected batteries. Uh, so I'm just going to weld them up here. Since we have a cargo container nearby, I can just go back and forth between it. No need to bring in the welder. Not that any welder could even fit inside here. <laughs> it's so cramped. Um, but should I try and get the jump drive? Let's see if we can build it. I, I doubt we'll be able to build anywhere close to the jump drive, but we have this right here. Might as well give it a give it a build. Problem is it's a lot of superconductors, and superconductors are kind of expensive, so I don't know if we even have them on base. Although we might. Look, it's actually going up pretty quickly. Couple more, and there we go. Hey, we have a jump drive. All right, that thing's gonna eat up all of our power while it charges, but we now have a jump drive on the base. So if I go up to the top level, it should look a little different now that we have actually something to stand on. There we go, little jump drive, nice. And this uses catwalks too. So let me get these built up and uh, and we'll see if, um, if maybe you can still see the jump drive through them. You can, yes. You can see that it's charging. Nice. I kind of had the idea for this to be a sort of grand hallway sort of thing. So it's going to have, like, things curved up on the sides. I could put stuff down here. Ooh, there's some free... I could put some batteries there, maybe? I don't know. So far we have, uh, I want to say, like, eight batteries on the, on the ship. These are three right here. Uh, and then there's a couple more in the back. Which, by the way, look how long this ship is. If I tried to run from side to side currently, you can't actually get there. It just takes a long time. So I'll run this way. 
then this way down the main hallway. Then I have to run to the side here to get to the stairwell, then down. I could go this way over here, past the bedrooms, and into the control rooms. So that's how long it took us to get to that side. And since there are redundant ways to get around, I could actually go this way also, where I run this way, then run up this side, run this way, then outside, I guess. Then back inside, and then over, down, up, like that. So yeah, or I could run down this way and run... There's a lot of ways! Um, by the way, as I was passing this, you might have noticed that I have a couple of random stairwells over here. This is what I'm planning to be our uh, entrance to the top deck. So we're gonna have four entrances, uh, three entrances rather, to the top deck over here. And probably one toward the front of the ship. And I was thinking maybe it'd be nice to have one in the back of the ship too, but I couldn't find a place to add it. There's a lot of stuff up here that'd be kind of hard to navigate around. Although I guess I could do it right here and then kind of come up that way. That wouldn't be that bad, actually. Okay, this kind of works. I can actually come up this way and then up here. And then up here, what I'd have is a little gap in our armor, um, which is not the most secure, but it's fine. Uh, I can even not do a full gap. I could do like a half gap by making this a uh, one of those. And then same thing on this side, right there. So you can still kind of come down. Uh, and then this would, oh, but that kind of connects right there. I don't really want to have a gap right there, but. I don't know. I guess it'll be fine. What's the worst that'll happen? It's not like space troopers can shoot through a very tiny hole and hit the explosive thing in the in, in the back of the ship. Uh, so yeah, that'll be another uh, entrance to the top deck right there. So we'll have an entrance to the top deck in the back. We'll have three entrances to the top deck in the middle, and then we'll presumably have an entrance to the top deck over here. And the top deck is going to be open. It's not going. It might have like a little control tower toward the back right there, or maybe even in the middle. Um, but it's mostly going to have little areas for ships, and it'll have like a little aircraft carrier style runway sort of thing. I don't know, something. Blame it all on the roots. I should have been bits and ruined your black tie affair. The last one to know, the last one to share, I'll be the last one you thought you'd see there. Oh, uh, I added a um, one of these as well, med center. I don't think I have the med components in base. Oh, maybe I do. Hang on. Let's grab. We can build these up. And perfect. We now have a med center on here. That's the new one, by the way. That's the, um, the what's it called? Corner med center? Maybe? Yeah, cor corner medical room, um, which is actually pressurizable, by the way. But I couldn't find a place anywhere else to use it. I thought about using it right here, but it didn't work. Um, for some reason, I think, I think it was because I couldn't pressurize the room anyway, because it's got this thing, uh, and it's also got this connection right here, which I don't think is pressurizable. All right, um, I think this is looking pretty good. I also think this is where we're gonna end the episode, because it's getting a little bit long. Uh, I think we're gonna abandon the whole five episode thing. I wanted to, okay, so first I said three episodes, right? I was like, in three episodes, we'll build a ship. But that was when the ship was like, that big. And at that point I was like, you know what? No, maybe we need maybe we need five episodes. And now the ship is this big and we're not <laughs> we're making progress, but not crazy progress like uh, like we're going to be able to finish the ship next episode. So I'm going to abandon the entire five episode thing. This is still the, the, the end of the series project. We're building this and then we're done. We're going to start new things because it's been a long time. This is again, 2021. Uh, it was when this started a long, long time ago. So it's about time for something new, but, um, but I'm abandoning the five episode thing. It, it might go six episodes. It might go 10. I don't care. I am uploading this a little more often. So I think it's going a little bit faster than I thought. I, the, the entire, our goal was to end the series by the by this year so to end the series by the end of this year and start a new one next year um, and it seems like uh, even though it seems like with the increased upload schedule of this series at least we're able to do more episodes than I had thought we'd be able to because um, before we were releasing like once a month or once every other week or something like that now we're pretty much doing once a week for these guys but um, Right, so, oh, that was a voice crack. Right, so what did we do in this episode? We started by going in third person. No, we started by building these custom turrets, which I think look pretty awesome. They have not been tested yet. We haven't had a reaver come while they've been active. So uh, so hopefully we'll be able to test those next episode. We did a lot of work on the body of the ship. We did some work on the front of the ship, got it looking pretty nice. I actually think this is a really nice front uh, for the ship. I like it a lot, and it's gonna probably mirror the same thing on the on the uh, other side to go back up once we've done the bridge, which is gonna be right there. Um, 
we did uh, we did a uh, printer, which this one's not set up, but the other one is a little drone printer right there, which actually works. Even though the drone is not currently configured to actually drive around and shoot things, I'll do that off camera. And by, by the time we come back to next episode, this guy will be active and able to shoot. And what we'll do is next time a Reaver attacks, I'll send this guy out and see if he can actually uh, defend the base pretty well. So that'll be fun. Um, but other than that, I think this was an, in, uh, uh, an interesting... Uh, packed episode full of stuff and the ship is coming along nicely um, leave any comments and stuff in the description please uh, in the sorry in the descriptions <laughs> I was focusing on multiple things at once being attacked by my lack of a helmet and trying to outro uh, leave any comments you have in the comments section please about what you think about the ship things that you think could be improved things you, that you would like to see added to the ship let me know and by the time we come back to next episode I should have a little bit more off-camera work done some of this more um, more uh, monotonous stuff like building the stuff we already have over there and building another drone and stuff like that but um anyway with that i'll see you all in the next episode and arrivederci <laughs>